well, I don't know about you, but I'm self-isolating. There's coronavirus raging out in the streets. I'm in the country here, but even so, we're taking no chances. Um, my wife and I have been locked into the house for, uh, for 10 days. We take occasional strolls outside to look at the sunshine and look after the garden. I'm working on my articles, but basically, that's it. And I can't get on my boat, which is locked in in Denmark. So no sailing, and I expect you're in the same position. So listen, what are we going to talk about? Well, I've been thinking about this, and there's one subject that some gentleman wrote to me about on my YouTube channel recently. He said, listen, he said, why don't you put a video up there about seasickness? You must know something about that. Well, I've got to tell you, mates, I do. I know a lot about seasickness. When I was a young man, I had it really badly. And I'm here to tell you that there's no shame in it. Nelson himself was seasick. He was seasick in Spithead while he was waiting to go to sea on his first voyage. And when I was a young chap, I used to be terribly seasick. I can remember one time going out of the needles in the little Baltic trader that I was on, a 90-ton trading catch, uh, with my shipmate John. And we were working on the peak halyard as we went out past the needles. It was February and it was pitch dark and it was a horrible night. And the light of the lighthouse was lighting us up. It was red as we went past it and we looked lurid. And we were pumping up, the, pumping up the peak halyard. I was on the pin and he was doing the pumping. And um, as he did a big heave, I just said, John, I can't cope anymore. I'm going to have to be sick. Just hold this turn, will you? And I handed him the turn. He hung on and I threw up over the side big time. And uh, I felt a bit better after that. So I grabbed my turn and we pumped up the sail and that was the end of that. Away we went into the night. But, you know, I felt absolutely awful. So I'm very, very sympathetic. The interesting thing is, as I've got older, the seasickness has got less and less and less. It's tailed away. And now, at my age, I'm really not seasick at all. I might occasionally feel slightly queasy if I'm down below peering at a chart for longer than I should be when I really ought to be out on deck keeping watch. But, you know, it's surprising how it's gone. Uh, my wife will tell you the same thing. Ros has had it too. Ros used to be terribly seasick. I remember going down from the Canaries once. We were bound for South America, going down towards the line, and we were taking the northeast trades right on the beam. It was brutal. Little boat, 32-footer. We were falling off the waves, getting beaten up. But we were making the best speed we could. We were making 150 miles a day, and uh, she was just sick as a rat. She was so seasick. In fact, she wrote in the logbook, there was a chick who was so sick she couldn't even eat a sick bit. And that was the state of her, and that went on for three days. But that was the magic of it. You see, after three days, she got better. And when I was a young chap on the old Baltic trader and the other vessels I had, including my own boats on my first ocean cruises, three days would do it. Suddenly, on the third day, well, you wake up to go on watch and you realise you're not wishing you were dead anymore. You fancy your breakfast. You go out, the sun's shining and it's not a bad day. And you're ready to go. You're a new man. And that's what will happen. It's just a matter of waiting for it. And if you're not on an ocean voyage, if you're just having a coastal trip, I'm afraid that's probably not going to happen. However, if you're sailing every day and you keep it up for, uh, for a week or so, you'll probably find that after a week it's gone, or at least it's backed off quite a lot. So um, what are you going to do about it if you are seasick? Well, there are remedies out there. Everybody I meet who suffers from seasickness has got some remedy, and they say, oh, this is what you need, try this, it'll work great. Well, it works for some people, but not for everybody, and that's been my experience. When I was a, a young instructor at, uh, at Cowes at the National Sailing Centre, as then was, I used to cross the channel every week with my students. They don't do that anymore because they reckon you don't learn anything crossing the channel. They think you have to pick up moorings and come alongside docks all the time. That's all very well, but I think it's nice to see ships coming over the horizon in the night <coughs> and see a foreign country come out of the dawn. You know, I think it's good for people to experience that. Then they find out if they really want to do it or not, but they also find out if they're seasick. And in my first year there, I found that a lot of people were seasick going across the channel. In fact, I kept a little log of how many were, and um, it was too many, really. So, second year, Stugaron arrived. That was a, it's a drug that works on the inner ear, <clears throat> uh, which is exactly where all the trouble emanates from. So uh, I decided I would read what it said on the packet and give my students a fair crack of the whip, and I did. I didn't feel too good myself in those days, so I took these pills, I made sure they took them, and we all took them together, and we started the day before we went to sea. 
because the first day we just used to potter around in the solar and nobody gets seasick in there. So that's what it says on the packet. That's what we did. And do you know, the seasickness regularity went down by over 50%. And I know that because I wrote it all down. It was a scientific method experiment. So Stugeron in those days worked for me and my shipmates. There are other things. People have patches they put on and magical things they put behind their watch that produce some sort of um, acupuncture effect. God knows what that is, but it seems to work for some people, but didn't work for me. None of these things work for me, but Stugeron did um, pretty well, actually. Um, but in the end, if it's not going to work for you, there's nothing you can do. But one chap I knew said, I'm not taking those pills. They make me feel drowsy. Well, I've got a simple answer to that, lads. <laughs> Which would you rather feel? A bit drowsy or wish you were dead? It's quite simple. Just feel drowsy. It's not the end of the world, is it? You can make yourself get up, but you can't make yourself get up if you're feeling really seasick. I have known some people who have been so seasick, they've just thrown in the sponge. They can't do anything. Uh, one of my pals, a man who nothing stops. He is a very strong guy. He's got a, a spirit that is absolutely unbreakable. I've seen him on the mountain and he's just completely unstoppable. When everybody else has given up, he'll rally the troops and keep them going. Sort of chap you want on your side in a time of war. And yet seasickness laid him low. He just couldn't get up. It beat him and, and, and he went green and he couldn't do anything. Tragic, really. It's very, very rare for that to happen. Very rare indeed. Most people can fight through it. My daughter gets seasick still. She's uh, 40 years old, I think, now, or something like that. And uh, she still gets seasick when she's in rough water and she hasn't been for a long while. But she's been the cook on a sail training vessel. Um, she just doesn't stop. She keeps going. She fights through it. And she knows that after a couple of days, she's going to be all right. And she is. So that's how she deals with it. But uh, she's also onto the pills, and the pills have helped her a lot. So, if you're actually seasick when you're on the boat, and you've had the pills, or you haven't, or whatever your situation is, but you're wishing you weren't there, how do you deal with it? Well, you've really got to just stand your watch, I'm afraid. You won't enjoy that. Stand your watch. If it's really rough, just throw up over the side of the cockpit. The seal will take it away. You'll feel better for a while after you've been sick. Don't try and fight it. Uh, but the really important thing comes when you go off watch. Here's the, here's the trick. Don't say, oh, I'm better on deck. I'm not going down below. I'll be sick if I go below. Well, you might be, but you've been sick on deck anyway. The trick is to think about what you're going to do. Get yourself all psyched up. Grab the bucket and then dive down to your bunk. Get straight on your bunk. Get your head down. Don't mess about taking your socks and shoes off and getting into your sleeping bag. That'll kill it for you. You'll be poorly. Just don't do it. Just get down there. Get on a bunk and pull your sleeping bag over you, pull anything over you, an old blanket, a, a, an old sail. I've used a spinnaker before now, just anything, but get your head down quick. Because once your head's down, you'll feel a whole lot better. You'll be surprised. You might even get some sleep, and you'll get four hours down there, or three hours, however long it's going to be, until the time comes to go and face up to it again. And uh, believe me, that works a treat. If you've got a cook, this is a tip from Ros, my wife, because she's cooked for, as I say, for a lot of people in bad weather, eight men in storm conditions going across the North Atlantic, and she doesn't quit. She's served up three, three course meals on time, every time, because you have to do that, because otherwise morale collapses. So, this is her trick. She stays on deck, and she thinks hard about what it is she's got to do when she goes down below. She thinks about where everything is that she's going to need, and she thinks about all the little things she's got to do, turn on the gas, knows where the matches are, all that. She knows everything that's going to happen. She makes a little bullet heading list in her head. And when she's ready, oh, excuse me, just thinking about food. When she's ready, down she goes. And she knows exactly what she's going to do. And she does it. And once she's done it, she gets back out on deck quick. And that has saved her on many a nasty traverse. So think about that. It's the same if you're navigating. Think about what you've got to do. Get down there and do it and get back out on deck. Or go off watch and get your head down. But don't just hang around scratching about looking for, looking for things that you've got to do. It won't work. OK, if you're the skipper, you've got to look after your troops. So look for signs that people are getting seasick. They may not say anything, but if they go quiet and they start yawning a lot, that's the giveaway. See what you can do to protect them. Give them a job. Put them on the wheel. Don't let them just sit there feeling sorry for themselves. 
Put them on the wheel, especially if there's something they can steer for, a star perhaps, not peering into the compass. That's not great. Um, send them below. Don't let them stay out there and get cold and hypothermic, because in the end it'll come back and bite you on the bum. You've got to look after them, and if you know they need to go below, you've got to send them below and tell them what to do when they get there. Down into the bunk, get your head down and get something over you. End of story. Put them in a good bunk. Don't, for goodness sake, send them to a bunk forward of the mast. The best bunks in my boat are in the saloon. They're very low down, and they've got big lee cloths, so you can fall into that and get your head on a pillow and, and, and you're sorted. Um, there's another good berth out. Don't put people forward. Give them a good berth if they're poorly. Give them a bucket in, just in case and get them down there with their heads in. So, there you are. That's a few thoughts about seasickness. But here's the best one of all. Never forget that however bad you feel, it will get better. One morning, you're going to get up, you'll turn out for your watch and you'll fancy your breakfast. You'll smell that bacon cooking and you think, oh, get, get, bring it on. I want it. And you'll look out, you'll come out the hatch, the sun will be shining through the tops of the waves as the boat lifts and surfs down the next one, and you'll be filled with the joy of living. There's nothing like being at sea when you're feeling good, and you will. Just hang in there and wait for it.